President Biden has said the COVID pandemic is over. He spoke to 60 Minutes last night from the Detroit Auto Show. It's the first time the event's been held since the pandemic began in 2020. Take a listen. We still have a problem with COVID. We're still doing a lot of work on it. Uh, it's, but the pandemic is over. If you notice, no one's wearing masks. Everybody seems to be in pretty good shape. And so I think it's changing, and I think this is a perfect example of it. According to Johns Hopkins University, the coronavirus has killed more than 1 million Americans. Roughly 400 people are still dying nationwide every day. So is the pandemic really over? Here to share his perspective is Dr. Peter Chin Hong, infectious disease expert with UCSF. Dr. Chin Hong, what were your thoughts when you heard the president say this? I, my thought was one of surprise and astonishment because even though it may be over in our minds and although we're in a lull right now, uh, it certainly isn't over in the way that we think something is over. And I'm worried a little bit about uh, putting uh, early closure on something when we still kind of need to be flexible and be on the alert mm -hmm. in case the weather changes. You know, when it's sunny, we go outside, we go to the beach. But when it's rainy, we go inside and we put on our protection. Hmm. I do feel like for over a year now, we've been kind of wondering and talking about when do we move from the pandemic phase to the endemic phase? At what point or what point do we need to reach before we can say the pandemic is over? I think there are two things that I look at personally. The first is predictability. Right now, it's anybody's guess when the next surge might come, if one would come what the variants would be, uh, how many people will get sick. Uh, the second factor that I think about is uh, how many people are dying. And right now, you know, if you multiply 437 by 365, which is the number of day people dying per day still in the U.S., even though we're in a slull, mm -hmm. uh, you get to about 160,000, which is several times higher than a regular flu season, like which is 35,000 deaths. Mm -hmm. So if you think about you know, 100 to 200,000 people dying every year. Additionally, over the levels of 2019, it's something to really think about. I, I would ask, you know, what timeline, or do you have an idea of a timeline here? But it does seem like every time we try to predict what coronavirus is going to do, we end up being caught off guard with a new variant. Yes, I think we're done with predictions. With COVID, we uh, just learned to celebrate the good times when we have it and you know put on protections when the times are a little bit rougher i would say however that the rougher times are getting smaller in magnitude mm -hmm. and they are getting uh further between uh we have longer intervals between the rough times so we are on the right path uh the population is getting stronger and stronger not only from vaccines but also from natural infections so when do we think it might happen well you know, I think if we see it this winter and then we see a relatively quiet 2023 until next winter, I would feel pretty happy about that predictability and the timing of boosters, et cetera. Okay. Uh, your colleague, Bob Walk, Dr. Bob Walker, he was tweeting today that at some point we do need to shift from emergency footing to a more long-term strategy. What would a long-term strategy look like? A long-term strategy would mean that uh, you know, we have the tools available to every American, even if they can't afford it. And that is why I think, even when you think about something like the booster campaign in the fall, um, right now with the drying up of federal funds, it means that we don't have outreach clinics to vulnerable communities. We don't have those uh, pop-up uh, vaccine stops anymore. So it really puts the onus on on local governments and public health departments locally, which is a lot of pressure if you think about mm -hmm. all the successes we've made. So what it means is that we don't ignore it and we continue to have some sort of funding to really get at the people who are falling between the cracks. I know that the new Omicron uh, booster shots or Omicron specific booster shots have uh, come out. Is is that the, the best thing folks can do right now heading into winter, fall and winter? Yes, so definitely. I mean, luckily you have to get a flu shot around the same time. So you can think of it at the same, uh, in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, in general, again, we don't know when the next COVID 
surge or increasing cases will happen. But if you get the booster shot and the flu shot sometime in October, uh, you can kind of predict when if cases are going to rise in December, January, February, which is what they typically do for flu. Uh -huh. However, if you're older and 65, if you're immune compromised, you probably would want to get it sooner rather than later. Okay. Dr. Peter Chen Hong with UCSF, thank you for your thoughts. Appreciate it.